Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation, Sector and Specialty Funds. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from the Vanguard website, which you can find online at investor.vanguard.com. In prior presentations, we've been looking at investment goals, strategies, tools, keeping in mind the two major categories of investments, that being the fixed income, typically the bonds, the equities, typically the common stock. Also thinking about the types of tools we might be using, including mutual funds, including ETFs, helping us to diversify possibly with less of an initial investment as opposed to investing in individual stocks and individual bonds. We've recently been taking a look at different types and categories of the mutual funds because once we think about investing in funds like mutual funds and ETFs, we wanna think about what kind of mutual funds then are available to us what type of investment strategy should we be putting together here's a quick recap of some of the funds we've been looking at in prior presentations we got the money market funds the bond funds the balanced funds the stock funds the international funds and now we're going to look at the sector and specialty funds so remember that our investment strategy we're going to say hey i want a balanced portfolio typically as an individual investor and i can do that by buying individual stocks and bonds but that's quite costly most of the time so i'm probably going to be using etfs or mutual funds if i'm using some kind of funds in order to invest then the question is do i want to have very minimal amounts of fund such as balanced funds which are going to be investing in a broad range of funds like bonds like stocks within the one fund the easy way to go or do i want to have more leeway even though i'm still investing in mutual funds possibly breaking out the stocks for example versus the bonds or possibly getting more in depth from there breaking out different segments of stock funds such as small cap mid cap and so on and so forth of us versus foreign as we've seen in prior presentations giving me a little bit more leeway in terms of where i want my balancing to be at any given time than simply the balancing standards of the balanced fund possibly using the balance fund as kind of like a guide to help me with those balancing <laughs> but in any case now we're going to go into the sector and specialty funds also keep in mind that if you're talking about a 401k plan or an ira or any kind of retirement plan you're still thinking usually about pretty much a mutual fund but is now under the umbrella of say a retirement plan or something like that so those things aren't like totally different you don't want to think about them as totally different you want to think okay they're using something similar a mutual fund of some kind typically that is now under the umbrella of an, a 401k or ira or something like that and that has tax implications related uh, to it that you need to consider so that's instead of thinking about it, it's a whole new world no it's the same world it just now has some different tax implications because it's under the umbrella of some kind of retirement plan okay sector and specialty funds focus on a specific industry uh, like precious metals real estate healthcare, or energy so when we talked last time we've thought about uh, the the u.s stock funds for example and we broke them out you think you could think about breaking them out into small cap or mid cap or something like that the size of the company but you also might want to break out your investments by sectors you might want to be having funds that are focusing specifically on real estate healthcare, and so on now note you don't want that to be your only fund because although it might be diversified under these sectors if the economy goes down for that particular sector then all the stuff in the fund even though it's diversified within a fund is not is not going to be fully diversified because it's only it's only diversified over a small area so you want to use them as a part of your overlying strategy but remember these funds have a very narrow focus exposing you to more risk and should only be used to supplement an already diversified portfolio so for example you might be saying that like you have let's say you have a balanced fund right now that is that is all balanced out for you and that's going to be your strategy but you think that there's a situation right now where you would be more heavily balanced it would behoove you to be more heavily balanced in healthcare for whatever reason then you might buy a, a healthcare specific say index fund for example to help balance you into into that area in conjunction in alignment with your overall you know investment strategy so those those are the kind of the ways that you might think about using 
these kind of specific sector funds. So what are sector and specialty funds? Sector funds, also known as specialty funds, are mutual funds and ETFs, exchange traded funds, that is, that concentrate on a specific industry or market. These funds take a targeted approach and invest only in companies in certain segments of the economy. So you're saying, hey, look, I, I think, for example, uh, time, like there's a health emergency, so I'm going to invest in the medical field. It looks like there's a big need for the medical field. So maybe you want to be more heavily there. You don't know which companies to actually invest in. You could pick actual stocks or you can pick the the funds. So, right. You might say the it looks to me like all the Congress people seem to be investing in the same area that there might be they might know something i don't know maybe i'll invest over there right? and so then you might invest in mutual funds over there so because of their narrow focus they offer less diversification which means they come with higher potential risks so you don't want to use them as your only investment strategy typically because you're not diversified if you do over the broad spectrum only within that certain sector so concentrating on a sector can increase your exposure to risk Sector mutual funds and ETFs give you access to a small part of the overall market, such as energy, real estate, or healthcare, for example. Though many of these narrowly focused funds and ETFs have the potential to grow, you should be equally prepared to experience wide swings in the value of your investments, including potentially large losses because it's more narrow. So if you were to invest in an individual stock, for example, you would expect in the short run that you might have more swings. It might look something more like this. And hopefully in the long run, you get you get that kind of growth that's going to be happening. If you invest in a more diversified portfolio, you would think maybe you get a little bit less of these swings <laughs> that are going to be that are going to be happening over here, because something that happens negatively to one part of the market might not happen negatively to another. If, however, you are investing in one sector, you're you're doing something closer to investing in just one company than having a more broad diversified portfolio. So once again, you would expect more variance to be happening uh, over the short term generally. So get more diversified exposure to sectors. So if you're not comfortable with the increased risk and volatility sector mutual funds and ETFs present, consider a few funds that provide broad coverage of the major industries. So whether you're interested in US or non-US stocks, fund options are available that provide a diversified mix of securities in a single fund. So choose a specific sector fund. If your current por portfolio is broadly diversified, you may already have sufficient exposure to the sector you're interested in. So you might be watching like a Bloomberg or some market analyst or something and they're like, hey, all the Congress people are dumping all their money into the healthcare industry. Maybe, they, maybe they're gonna pass a law <laughs> or something. Like, maybe I should have my money in the healthcare industry. So you might start to panic and say, well, you might have some of your money already in there because if you're investing in, in a diversified kind of fund, then some of that diversification is probably in that particular industry. So then the question would be, how much do I have already invested if I'm already invested in mutual funds? Do I wanna be more heavily invested in this particular area? If I do, then I want maybe to add on or purchase another you know, industry specific fund at that point, possibly. Only consider increasing your exposure to narrowly focused funds if you're comfortable with the added risk. Sustainable investing with specialty funds. So are you part of the growing community of investors uh, who want to invest in companies with strong environmental, social, and governance? Those are the ESG track records. Uh, we offer a lineup of ESG investments that can help you achieve your financial goals and match your dollars with ma uh, what matters to you. So again, when you're investing in these mutual funds, you don't have a lot of control over the individual companies you're investing in oftentimes. And you might say, hey, look, they're investing in some companies that I think are, are wrong. I don't think I don't agree with the way that they're doing things or whatever. So you might try to invest in such a way that you're more conscious of, of the companies that you're investing in. That's kind of the idea behind the environmental and social governance. But again, I'm highly, highly skeptical of this kind of thing because it grows into just a badge, right? So whoever has the capacity to put the stamp of an ESG on a particular fund now has now increased the value of it because they put this brand on it, which is supposed to mean something, but in the future, 
I'm not sure it's going to mean as much as it as it would, or, or it might be something you know different. It might just be you know the cool group, but the cool group you know put this tag on it, and and now you're paying a bunch for it. I'm not sure it's actually saving the world or anything. So I do agree with the idea of investing in places that you think are that you want to invest in, but I'm 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 becoming more and more highly skeptical of this particular strategy because again I think it gives a lot of power to the whoever puts that stamp on it but in any case do your research so what risk can I expect with sector funds Vanguard classifies sector funds as aggressive which means they can be subject to extremely wide fluctuations in share prices at a high level here are some of the risks involved with specialty funds. We got the industry concentration risk. A fund that targets a specific industry will generally be more volatile than one that invests more broadly. So you're, you're narrowing down your investment, you're less diversified, therefore more risk is typically the outcome. There's a chance that particular problems could affect an entire industry. So if you're in diversified over the whole health industry and all of a sudden, like we cured disease <laughs> then the whole health health industry would fall apart um, it's probably not likely to have you don't have a whole lot of risk i guess on that particular scenario but you get the concept right and but other industries still wouldn't would be fine so you you would think if there was no risk the smoking industry and booze would skyrocket because now the risk is gone so you could any case we're going too far in the hypotheticals here but you get the point stock market risk stock markets tend to be cyclical and can have periods of rising and falling prices so there's a chance that stock prices overall could decline funds that invest in foreign stocks could be riskier than u.s stock funds since foreign stocks can be more volatile and less liquid than u.s stocks asset concentration risk targeting a certain sector could mean the fund invests a high percentage of assets in its 10 largest holdings the fund's performance could be hurt disproportionately by the poor performance of a few holdings so if you just have a, a few a lesser diversification than the big where your big weights are at the big weighting of your funds uh, into particular companies th those particular companies could have an outsized influence on your whole fund sector funds are considered non-diversified which means they may invest a greater percentage of their assets in particular securities than most mutual funds there's a chance the fund's performance could be hurt by the poor performance of relatively few stocks or a single stock 